Every day, hundreds of thousands of patrolmen report for duty. Armed with a badge and the latest in video technology, you are about to witness their never-before-seen footage. Their stories, caught on tape. Stop sticks set off a high-speed somersault. Cops call in the cavalry. A suspect takes a swing. A bystander dodges bullets. And an officer means business. Surrender your remote and get ready for some serious disorderly conduct. Ocala, Florida, cops chase a man they believe was involved in a disturbance. Now the suspect and his passenger flee at more than 80 miles an hour. At this speed, the officer can't make that turn. He just misses the lamppost, skids across the grass, and swerves back onto the road before he picks up the pursuit again. Cops plan to set up spike strips to shred the suspect's tires and stop the pursuit. One officer shouts an urgent warning. The stop sticks blow out two tires on the truck which slams into two other cars before it rolls end over end. Both the driver and the passenger are ejected. Signal four is a traffic exit. That's the truck's passenger, and amazingly, he's only slightly injured. Cops take no chances with him. People are also injured in the two cars he hit. Officers work to keep the situation under control. The truck driver, his passenger, and the occupants of the other cars he hit are all taken to the hospital. But none of them are seriously injured, despite the high-speed somersault. Now, the driver's charged with felony fleeing, aggravated assault, and driving on a suspended license. He faces 30 months in jail. Soto Parish, Louisiana. Police pull over a man they suspect of a narcotics violation. How you doing today? Uh, you run a little fast. Yeah, I was speed. Uh, yeah, I was speed. Yeah, put your hands right there. Yeah, um, yeah. At first, the man is cooperative, but that's about to change. Oops. What's wrong, man? You see something here. I got need to talk to you about something. When the suspect sees the other officer drive up, he goes ballistic. Both officers, along with a canine, try to apprehend the subject. But this guy is determined to get free. The man is adamant about not going to jail. He breaks free and races across the road. As officers pursue the suspect, an undercover narco unit arrives at just the right time to take him down. Hey, big old 
Delta, get on the ground. One officer spots a key piece of evidence. I'm gonna go for this one, evidence back. What? With the suspect in custody, these officers can finally catch their breath. He's charged with possession and distribution of crack cocaine, as well as resisting arrest and battery of a police officer. Knoxville, Tennessee. A dashboard camera watches as cops break up a minor disturbance call. It looks like it's all over, but keep an eye on the guy in the white t-shirt. Those flying fists belong to a 17-year-old high school football player. Off camera, the six foot four athlete knocks out one officer, then takes on his partner. Nearby officers see the scuffle and move in to assist. They don't want to hurt the kid, but he's got to be stopped. So this officer goes for even more help. Moments later, he returns with a stun gun and moves in to take care of business. The teenager is subdued, and the drama finally comes to an end. One officer suffers a broken cheekbone. Another has a bloody nose. The young man is transported to jail, where he's charged with assault on a peace officer and resisting arrest. Disorderly conduct is just beginning. SWAT swoops in to stop a pursuit. And fireballs light up a taxi cab. That and a whole lot more. Straight ahead on disorderly conduct. This black Chevy Yukon was reported stolen from Beverly Hills. And now it flies through heavy traffic in South Los Angeles. Cops were alerted when the SUV's anti-theft tracking system was activated. The suspect terrifies motorists by driving down the wrong side of the road, inches from oncoming vehicles. He clips one car and then swerves back onto the wrong side of the road again. It's only a matter of time before this happens. One of the occupants of the white sedan is eight months pregnant. She's slightly injured along with two others in this crash. But it does nothing to slow down the fleeing SUV driver. He hits a curb. Now there's smoke coming from the smashed rear wheel and tire. The damage takes its toll. Cops close in and the driver finally has to stop. Now it turns into a tense standoff. They blast the back window with pellets. Officers call in the heavy artillery. That's an armored SWAT truck. It blocks him in, then pushes the SUV backwards into a patrol car. The suspect tosses a note to the officers. In the note, the suspect tells police he wants to finish his marijuana cigarette before he surrenders. The officers grow increasingly impatient with his games. That's a second SWAT truck. Calmly, he exits the SUV, still smoking, and brushes the ash from his pants. Now, he faces multiple charges, including hit and run, grand theft auto, and felony fleeing. This is the spectacular countryside outside Anchorage, Alaska. But tonight, cops see something much wilder than this terrain. 
a passenger inside this cab has attacked the driver. The cabbie flees with the keys and calls the cops, but the passenger refuses to leave. Reinforcements and a SWAT team pull up just in time for the fireworks. The suspect uses a lighter and starter fluid to set off those fireballs. Time for something completely different. Bored with the pyrotechnics outside, he sets off one big fireball inside the cab. That's enough. The SWAT team moves in before he sets the cab on fire. One officer smashes the back window and tosses in a tear gas grenade. Rattled by the tear gas, the suspect hangs out the window, gasping for air. The officers safely subdue him, and now he faces charges of assault, criminal mischief, and resisting arrest. But the bizarre behavior still has those Alaskan officers scratching their heads. Police pursue a possible stolen pickup truck in Gulf County, Florida. An officer had him stopped once, but the driver decided to flee. The man and his passenger hit 90 miles an hour along the scenic two-lane highway. The driver slices between cars, as other drivers do their best to avoid him. Then, without warning, he pulls off to the side of the road and switches directions. The call goes out to get the spike strips ready. As the suspect continues to drive all over the road, an empty beer container flies out of the pickup. Meanwhile, other officers lay out spike strips just ahead. Pursuing officers back off in anticipation of what may happen when the truck's tires hit the spikes. Other drivers become aware of the situation and pull over to the side of the road. Then the driver swerves to avoid the strips. The driver overcompensates and slams into a car on the right shoulder. He careens across the highway and hits another vehicle before he spins to a stop. When the cop with the camera pulls up, he sees a body next to the truck. The pickup's passenger is ejected, and now he lies motionless on the side of the road. While one officer rushes to arrest the driver, Others attend to the roadside victim. The camera records audio of the driver and their arresting officer. What the are you running for? I'm scared, man. I'm an alcoholic. I'm scared. That's silly. I know it is, man. I mean, a trip to jail over people getting hurt. But I did take the truck. Yeah. Where you oh. hurt at? My hurt. The driver is booked for assault with a deadly weapon, grand theft auto, and attempt to elude. Two passengers in the vehicles he hit are briefly hospitalized with minor injuries. As for the truck's passenger who was thrown from the vehicle, he survived with bruised ribs and a major case of road rash. Up next on Disorderly Conduct, police in pursuit of a stolen truck get help from a surprising source. Oh, bitch. And a suspect gives new meaning to the word outspoken. You nasty bitch. I bet you don't bathe right out of the paper three, four days. No need to go overboard. Disorderly Conduct will be right back. Wildwood, Florida. Pursuing cruisers record this cop's relentless attempts to stop this U-Haul. Suddenly, he goes off-road to evade the blocking patrol cars. Once he's back on the road, the officers close in. Stop, stop, stop. 
But he slips through the block again. Then the cop sees the U-Haul coming straight for him. The officer drives around a building to cut him off. But he's too late. A large semi-truck and evening traffic partially block the suspect's escape route. He's off again. West on 44. But a trucker quickly crosses the road to help the cops block him in. Box truck list assistant. But again, he escapes. This camera captures a pickup trying to intercept. Now the driver of a large milk truck bravely takes up the challenge. The lead car gives a perfect shot of the action. Again, he tries to escape the block. But the truck driver's ready for it. Even with a gun to his face and his life in danger, the suspect still will not leave the stolen truck. Just when they think they have him, he takes off running. After a long, frustrating chase and a short foot pursuit, the cops finally have their man, thanks to a total stranger and a milk truck. The driver of this stolen U-Haul faces 15 different charges, including Grand Theft Auto, Aggravated assault to police officers, battery, and felony flee. A drunk driving suspect in Stork, Florida, gets a few things off his chest. A surveillance camera records every syllable as he shares his thoughts with police. You can't even look at me when I'm talking to you. You little nasty bitch. I bet you don't bathe but I look there for three or four days. The officer who's assigned to keep an eye on him really gets an earful. Is it Sergeant or Lieutenant? Captain what? Sergeant. I'm Sergeant Seller. You are Sergeant. Ain't going around. Have you ever thought about going on? Despite the constant verbal barrage, the officers refuse to lose their cool. Finally, the suspect admits he has a problem. I'm alcoholic. When he refuses to submit to a breathalyzer test. He's officially booked for driving under the influence. You little bastard, why you want to be so mean to me? You little bastard. When you can bend brim fishing or something. And now that he's about to be taken to jail, he leaves police with one last thought. Carrollton, Georgia. Sheriff's Deputy Cliff Meyer tries to pull over a woman for speeding. She's going 90 miles an hour in her Ford SUV in the rain. A dashboard camera from a following squad car captures the action as the officers box in the woman on the freeway. But the suspect still wants to run. Ah, she's still moving. 
Once again, they catch up to him. Deputy Meyer takes the lead once more, and this time he gets some extra help from a tractor trailer that slows down to create a moving roadblock. That's when the deputy makes his move. He uses the precision immobilization technique, the pit maneuver, to spin the suspect into the median. Here's how it looked to Deputy Meyer from his own dashboard camera. She could have made everyone's day easier by simply pulling over and taking the ticket. Instead, she ends up in handcuffs and faces charges for multiple traffic violations and evading arrest. A truck's pulled over after Deputy Perez sees the driver drift over the center lane. It's quickly obvious to Deputy Perez that this stop in Hebronville, Texas, could be a problem. The passenger appears to be very drunk and won't obey orders. I'm sorry, are you driving? Are you driving? This is my, this is my boy, man. Okay, well, if you're not driving, you don't need to worry about it. The deputy wants to talk to the driver, but he's very concerned about the seemingly intoxicated passenger. Stay right there. Don't walk up on me, man, okay? No. You stay there. You got any knives or anything like that? No. Well, I got my knife. The deputy tells the man in Spanish to place the knife on the back of the truck. Deputy Perez has had enough. He's alone on a desolate Texas highway with a belligerent suspect and his passenger. Put your hands behind your back. No, sir. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. I don't want to go. Hey, you're under arrest. Deputy Perez does his best to calm the man down. I don't know. I don't Put your hands behind your back. Let me go. He's real. Hey, come here. When the man suddenly raises his arms, the deputy takes more aggressive action. Hey, what the hell are you doing, man? Put your hands behind your back. The officer manages to pepper spray the suspect, but it makes no difference. He radios for backup. A second officer finally arrives. With the passenger finally locked in the patrol car, Deputy Perez performs the field sobriety test on the driver. He fails, and he's arrested and cuffed. He's taken to the station with the passenger and is charged with public intoxication, resisting arrest, and assault. Coming up on Disorderly Conduct, Video proof of the dangers officers face every day, both on the road and off. Stay with us. More disorderly conduct is just around the corner. Deputy Sheriff Roger St. Laurent wisely checks for speeding traffic before he approaches a stopped car in Highland County, Florida. You know I stopped you, man? On radar, um, the speed that was given was 74. Did you realize you were going that fast enough? You did not. That cost her a speeding ticket. But this traffic stop almost cost Deputy St. Laurent his life. 19 miles an hour over the speed limit. In Florida, it's here in Moon The deputy glances over his shoulder again to check on approaching traffic. Seconds later. A speeding white Buick hits him so hard, it rips off the side mirror. Come on, I've been hit by a vehicle. <laughs> oh, okay. You copy. Holy <laughs> The 
officer begs the driver for help. Please, can you get out of the vehicle? Make sure I'm okay. Please. Vehicle went northbound, uh, correct and southbound 27. Uh, did not stop. Didn't get a visual on it. Uh, Where did you get hit? I got hit in the hip. Deputy St. Laurent is injured and shocked, but his sense of humor is still healthy. Your pants are ripped. I don't care about the rip. <laughs> the scrape, okay. Holy crap. Oh, that's gonna be so bad. I hope I'm okay. And he's very grateful for this lady's help. By the way, you're scaring out of this. I I'm what? I can't continue writing the ticket. I'm just too worried that I'm okay right now. Deputy St. Laurent goes to a nearby hospital, but he has just minor injuries. Police later arrest the hit and run driver when they spot the white Buick with its mirror missing. <laughs> Greensboro, North Carolina, an officer pursues a spousal abuse suspect. The driver tries to keep this officer from getting too close, but this deputy won't let him get away. He radios their location, and the fleeing driver becomes even more reckless. After running up the shoulder, he cannot control his skidding car. It's a wild spin right into the median. Fortunately, he doesn't take out any other vehicles. The wrecked car finally stops. The suspect rolls out and tries to run. He does not get far. It's a wild end to a very dangerous high-speed chase, but the officer gets his man. Now the suspect has to face much more in addition to the charges for assaulting his wife. It's 2 a.m. on a Tuesday morning in Reno, Nevada. State Trooper Greg Moore gives a sobriety test to a suspect while his partner Trooper Scott Simon looks on. The suspect was pulled over after weaving in and out of lanes on the freeway. The field breathalyzer test indicates a DUI. Trooper Moore proceeds with the arrest. At first, the suspect seems willing to comply, but when he realizes he's about to be cuffed, he makes a break for it. Trooper Simon has him pinned against a road barrier. <laughs> but the suspect is able to wrestle himself free. He falls to the ground. Then he makes a desperate leap over the barrier and heads down the freeway on foot with troopers in close pursuit. The suspect was later caught and taken into custody. He was booked on 11 charges, including DUI, failure to maintain traffic lanes, obstruction, possession of cocaine, revoked license, four outstanding warrants for arrest, battery on police, and, as the trooper's dashboard camera plainly shows, resisting arrest. A man with a lot to run from, but he didn't get far. Next up on Disorderly Conduct, a customer walks in on an armed robbery in progress. And a high-speed pursuit takes a dangerous turn. That's moments away on Disorderly Conduct. It's early morning in Los Angeles, California, and the police are in hot pursuit of a man in a white Mitsubishi wanted on a felony kidnapping warrant. 
The suspect hits speeds of more than 60 miles an hour on these residential streets. He seems to have no care for anyone else on the road. The chase is a dangerous one for the police because the driver's behavior is so erratic. The man is so out of control that police can't pinpoint where to put down spike strips to blow out his tires. With the morning commute about to begin, the LAPD know they have to take this car out, so they close in for a pit maneuver. But this guy isn't going for it. The closer police get, the more reckless he becomes, making a pit nearly impossible. The driver hits the gas and then makes a hard right to shake the patrolman off his tail. And it works. As the Mitsubishi turns the corner, the patrolman loses control and barrels straight into a furniture store. Amazingly, he's okay. But now it's up to his fellow officers to bring the chase to an end. Police need a break, and they get it when the Mitsubishi blows a tire. Finally, the car comes to a stop. The suspect jumps out and makes a run for it. but he doesn't get far. Police are waiting for him around the corner, and he gives up. The pursuit is now a code four. Suspect in custody. No further action needed. This high-speed chase with many twists and turns leads one officer nearly into harm's way. But in the end, police get their man, and you can bet will be a long time before he gets behind the wheel again. <laughs> Two armed robbers burst into a Philadelphia convenience store. The surveillance video shows one suspect as he wrestles with the cashier. while his wife is beaten and robbed off camera by a second man. The robber takes $200 cash from the register and the cashier's wallet. The second suspect grabs his wife's pocketbook. Suddenly, a customer walks in on the robbery. With a gun pointing right at her, the woman runs for her life. The robbers follow her out, but they let her go. The woman takes off, and the suspects flee the scene, leaving a terrified store owner and his wife behind. Now police search for the two suspects who pulled off this brazen robbery. There's more disorderly conduct to come. Gunfire erupts in a quiet suburb. Shoot all over the and a camel named Clyde takes police for a ride. <laughs> it's all coming up next on Disorderly Conduct. It's a police standoff in Cocoa Beach, Florida. A man barricaded himself inside his house after an altercation with a process server.
when officers contact the suspect's wife at work, she tells them that her husband is mentally unstable and that there are weapons in the home. Neighbors are evacuated. After a one-hour standoff, the man appears in his doorway with a gun tucked in his waistband. The shirtless suspect quickly retreats back inside. Moments later, he re-emerges. The man raises his weapon. Officers open fire. The suspect shoots back. Incredibly, no one is hit in the brief exchange of bullets. It isn't long before the man comes back out and opens fire again. He takes aim in the direction of the camera, and you can hear the bullets as they whiz past the microphone. That's debris from the camera woman's vehicle. You can hear the woman describe the drama on her cell phone. The man comes out with a gun to his head. A second look shows that the man is shot in the upper arm, but it doesn't stop him. He takes another bullet to his other arm. After he retreats to the house, he comes out one more time without his gun and with blood from his wounds smeared on his chest. He has finally had enough and lays down on the lawn. SWAT team members cautiously move in and secure the suspect. Remarkably, only the gunman is injured. The man is treated at the scene, then transported to a hospital for further treatment of his arm wounds. Although over 40 rounds are fired, no one else is hit in the shootout. Several days later, the man is wheeled into court where his lawyer claims he was taking medication for back pain and depression. In the end, he's charged with 15 counts of attempted murder, one for each of his bullets found at the scene. It's an unusual sight anywhere in America, but the last thing you'd expect to see on a Tuesday morning in Tennessee. is a cop chasing a camel named Clyde. When people was uh, passing by, they thought it was very unique to see a camel on the side of the road in the state of Tennessee, because camels just don't live in Tennessee. My main duty is to keep him off the state road and put him back in his pen. His keeper uses Clyde for nativity scenes during Christmas. But the camel has escaped from his enclosure eight times already. Cheatham County Sheriff's Deputy Jason Barnes has a pretty good theory about how Clyde does it. He just steps over the fence because he's got five, six foot legs and the fence is four foot. But getting Clyde back home is no easy task. On Tuesday, the deputy pursues Clyde in his car. On Wednesday, they're at it again on the 
the same road. On Thursday morning, Clyde is found trespassing in somebody's front yard. Then he heads off down the driveway. Later, it's a battle of wills as Clyde leads the deputy on a foot chase across the distant horizon. The deputy tries to outsmart Clyde by cutting him off, but the camel changes direction. In fact, it seems the only way the deputy can get close to Clyde is with the zoom lens of his dashboard camera. He attempts to nudge him closer to home. He can't do it by car. So once again, it's an intense foot pursuit. The deputy literally chases Clyde back to his fence to the far right of your screen. A backup car moves in to aid the exhausted deputy and brings him back unharmed. It took some time, but the problem was finally solved. Nobody knows exactly why Clyde became an escape artist, but whatever the reason, he sure met his match with Deputy Barnes. Get ready for the new Clement Saturday night. It's locked, loaded, and aimed straight at your bloodshot eyes. Get the f away from me. With five hours of destruction, pain, mayhem, and action. I'm gonna smash your little head. Guaranteed to rock and shock you back to life. I can't even describe what I'm seeing. The new, ever more painful Clement Saturday night. The Hurt Hits Home, Saturday, starting at 7. Get him! Coming at you! Wear a cup, only on Spike.